Well, you know, um, I work with the same behavioral issues that you work with and that really all hypnotherapists or most hypnotherapists. I mean, as you, as you get more experience and as you, as you get better at it, you know, you can take on more complex issues. I mean, there are things that I, I work with today that I never could have when I first started because I just didn't have the knowledge or the experience, but you know, some of the more esoteric things like getting over really weird fears. Like, you know, I help a lot of people getting over the fear of death, which is quite common. And unfortunately it's something that is an inevitable part of life. And if it's holding you back from living fully, then, then it's an issue. Um, I, I help people with relationship issues, you know, fear of commitment. Um, I mean, if you can, if it's a behavior, I probably have seen it. Most of my work, and I'm sure most of yours too today, Laura, is dealing with stress and anxiety. That seems to be like an ep- epidemic in our, our society, partly because we're energetically imbalanced as a population. Um, and that anxiety can take so many different forms. Uh, you know, everybody hangs their anxiety on a different hat. And so they can be pretty esoteric and interesting. Um, but if it's behavior, then this, then I probably work with it. And a lot of, you know, and we should mention, and I know you do this too, hypnotherapy isn't just helping people get over limitations or issues. It also helps people that are doing well do better. Because yeah. that's so I work with a lot of, you know, I'm out in LA, so I have the, I'm right in Hollywood, not in Hollywood, but I'm, I, I, and I used to be a working actor. I work with a lot of actors, writers, musicians, producers, directors, uh, dancers, athletes, all levels, different sports, they're already doing well and they just want to take their game up to the next notch. This process works just as well for that because everything, if you think about it, our entire life is controlled by the mind. So if your mind's not working the way you want it to, you need to change it. And all of this is simply helping people change the way their mind works so that it works the way they want it to rather than the way they thought they were stuck with. I love that. I'm taking a little pause in in here right now, just because you said you're in LA, Santa Monica area. For listeners who are hearing the show and might not be in that area, do you have products available for them to purchase? Can they, how can they get this book? Do you have any MP3s or CDs available? How can they learn more about you and your oh, well, thank you for Thank you for that entree. Oh, great. Here's my little commercial. Uh, if you're interested at all in the synthesis effect, you can find the book online uh, on Amazon or barnesandnoble.com. It comes in both paperback and ebook. Uh, it's out of the bookstores now, but if we have a second printing, which I'm hoping we will, then it'll be back in the stores. But they don't keep books in the stores very long anymore. But it's available online, the synthesis effect, or you can just look me up on Amazon, Dr. John McGrail, and you'll get the book. And I do have products for sale on my websites. Um, They are MP3 files, and uh, I have one for smoking cessation, one for weight loss, one for sleep issues, which is a comprehensive program that addresses both the physical, emotional, and spiritual aspects of sleep issues. And then I have one for general well-being and general change. It's called Pathway to Transformation, which you can use for any change you want to make that doesn't fit into the sort of the big three. Um, My websites are are easily found. You can Google me, Dr. John McGrail Hypotherapy, and you'll see all of that stuff, but it's hypnotherapy Los Angeles, all one big word.com or Dr. John McGrail.com. I've got two sites. Um, and both of those sites have a products page. If you click on the products page, you go to the, the, the MP3s. They're very, very affordable. They're, they're all designed uh, uh, on the, on the programs that I use in the clinic. These are tried and true techniques that I've been using for 16 years in private practice and they're very, very effective. So thank you for that entree. I, I hope people take advantage of that because it's like a session with me, but um, an awful lot cheaper. <laughs> exactly. And what I like personally about people doing the work themselves is like you mentioned that one kind of general well-being. You can use it for whatever is on your mind at the moment. And oftentimes in my practice, and I'm sure in your practice as well, people come in for one issue and it's really about something else. You know, one of my friends who is a um, psychotherapist, not a hypnotherapist, but she always talks about it's not about the peas. It's not about the peas. People come in because there's a problem getting their kids to eat peas. It's not about the peas. It's about (laughs) something deeper. (laughs) Exactly. That's absolutely true. And, you know, the other thing that's it's fair to say is that, and I say this both in my book, uh, you know, the book is designed to help people do this process on their own. And you start right out of the gate. As soon as you're reading the introduction, every chapter has action items so that there are little homework exercises to do so so that you can learn the process. 
And it's designed so that as you take it chapter by chapter, you build your skill set. And by the end of the book, you're doing full-blown synthesis. But I also say, and that includes the do-it-yourself programs, some people need more assistance. And if you do, there's an appendix in the book that's a guide to helping you find the right professional help. And if I can give myself one more plug, and I'm sure you Please. do this, I work with clients all over the world. Um, with technology today, you can do this work not on every issue, but on many remotely. And so I just finished working with a gal in London. I've got somebody in, in uh, Japan and all over the States, Europe. Uh, you know, all you got to do is figure out the time zones. You can still do this work very powerfully. So if you find that you need a little extra help uh, and you can't find someone in your area, there are always remote sessions possible. Yeah. So there's no excuse if you want to make a change in your life, not to make the change. The help is there. <laughs> exactly. And I like that you mentioned the remote sessions because it is all energy. And when we're both holding the intention to connect, it is just as powerful to be, you know, remote on Zoom or on Skype or whatever, FaceTiming with somebody than it is to be in the same office with somebody. That's absolutely true. Now, that said, there are a few techniques that I have that I've developed that do require personal contact because you, you have to physically be able to be in contact with one another, but most of it can be done beautifully remotely and you Wonderful. get just as effective results. Wonderful. So yeah, listeners, if you're just, if you have something going on, absolutely reach out. If you're just curious about it, reach out too, because I love how you said you help people become better whether it's acting or singing or whatever, I, I'm a performer. I use EFT for my stage fright. I perform fine. It's just that I was tired of managing that heightened anxiety. I like a little bit of anxiety. I don't like it to tip me over the edge. I use EFT to calm it back down. So it's not that I had a problem, but I did have the recognition, recognition that I could do better. And it sounds to me like that's kind of what you're saying with some of these programs too. It's not that it has to be a full blown problem, but they can be better. Right. I mean, if you think of professional athletes, uh, when you get to that level of accomplishment, the difference between good and great is usually in the mind. They both have great bodies. They're both in great shape. They both have trained for many, many years. So what's the difference between the winner and the loser? In golf, it can be one stroke. In a ski race, it can be tenths of a second or hundredths of a second. Um, you know, and so the, the difference is almost always the mindset. And I work with a lot of actors. I was a working actor myself. And, um, you know, a lot of people just have to get out of their heads. As you so well know, you're a performer. If you're in your head, you can't win the audition. You have to be able to get out of yourself. And this process works so well for that kind of stuff, for performance enhancement. And I really, I enjoy that as much as helping people solve problems is watching people that are at the top of their game get to the next level. It's just very, very cool. I bet. Now, what are some of these other tools that you do? Because I know you've done EFT. Um, yes. What I've, I'm forgetting, there are several others. Um, NLP, NLP and Pathway. Yeah. Tell our listeners what those all are. Well, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is, is a very, very cool uh, discipline. It was designed or conceived in the 70s by a couple of guys up in Berkeley who probably were smoking a little too much weed. But uh, for whatever reason, they said, you know, what's the difference between the people that do okay and the people that do great? And how come some people can be born in the ghetto with no possibility of success and, and, and become world famous, and other people are born with a silver spoon in their mouth, and they amount to nothing? What's going on here? So they decided to start observing and finding out the difference. And in that observing, they tapped into psychotherapy, they tapped into hypnotherapy, they tapped into uh, gestalt therapy, and a lot of the other techniques that were coming out in the 60s and 70s because we started getting very curious about the mind. And they came up with this thing called neuro, the mind, linguistic, how we communicate, programming, how we want run our behavioral and emotional programs to get what we want. So what it is simply said, because that's a big word, neuro-linguistic program, it's hard to say. It's a, tech, it's a technology as much as human behavior can be technologi technology. Let's see, can we place into a technology? I can't, that's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just and, add an end and create your own. It's fine. Yeah, uh, <laughs> as much as you can uh, technologize, um, 
it's a technology that helps us. It's a technology that helps us understand in a profound way how and why we behave and communicate in order to get what we want. And in understanding that, it really, really, there, there are also a bunch of tools that these two guys, um, Bandler and Grindler, developed to help people change the things that aren't working. So, and these two guys back in the 70s um, started watching the difference between how people behaved and got what they wanted or didn't. And they developed this sort of methodology for understanding. And along the way, tapping into psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, gestalt therapy, um, they develop tools and techniques to help people create changes in their strategies. The theory is that everybody has a strategy for everything they do. For instance, real quick, say you and I want to both buy a car and we both want a new Mini Cooper. Now you may say, okay, I'm going to go online. I'm going to build my Mini Cooper on their website. I'm going to go to the dealer and I say, okay, here's the car I want. Do you have it? The dealer says, yep, there it is. And you say, okay, I'll buy it. I, on the other hand, have to go to the dealer and I have to look at every single car on the lot until I find the one I like. Now, we both drive away with a Mini Cooper, but how we did it, our strategies for obtaining that goal are different. And so NLP helps us understand an individual's given strategies, whether they're working or not working, and then through the tools they devised, change those strategies so that we start getting the outcomes we want rather than the ones we don't want. That's the essence of NLP. And of course, EFT is very, very popular now. And I've been, I've been using, I, I think I got certified about 15 years ago. Um, it is using tapping on acupressure points, getting back to the theory that all we are is energy and our mental and physical well-being or not well-being is determined by our energy flow or blockage. If we're not feeling good physically or emotionally, there's a blockage in the flow of energy. So we tap on certain points of the body to unblock the energy and get it flowing again. And as you so well know, it can work extremely, extremely well. Now, nothing works perfectly for everybody, which is why it's nice to have a whole bunch of different tools to use. Yes, uh, thank you for saying that. That is such a powerful statement for people who have said, I've tried some of that woo-woo stuff and it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, it's, it's, most of it's not woo-woo because now the science behind it is, is very evident. The, the discoveries that have been made in, in fields like neurophysiology and uh, epigenetics and uh, quantum physics and wave theory, the discoveries that are now scientific fact, which used to be woo-woo, just like, you know, going to the moon used to be woo-woo, but we did it. Uh, yeah. It's not woo-woo anymore. Now we're understanding so much more about the basis of humanity, the basis of behavior, the basis of our very existence energetically uh, that these tools are simply methods to tap into what's already going on. So, um, you know, people say, well, I tried that. And I get that all the time. Most of my clients, by the time they come to see me, say, well, I've tried everything. Nothing's worked. And I say, well, okay. And then three weeks later, they say, geez, why didn't I call you first? I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. But yeah, there's no silver bullet. There's not one technique Hypnosis doesn't work well for everybody. NLP doesn't work well for everybody. EFT doesn't work well for everybody. But there are so many cool techniques if you take the time to learn them that, uh, and, and again, this is partly experience and training and you just, you know, learning. That's why I did the PhD for four years. But there's almost always something that will work. You just have to find the right path for a given individual. Yes. One of the th analogies that I like to use, and you know, people either love my analogies or hate them. So, hey, I'm just going to put that out there, <laughs> is cooking methods. <clears throat> Sometimes you microwave something and it just doesn't cook right. You need a real oven, not a microwave. Sometimes you try to cook something on the stovetop and it doesn't really work. It's better in the microwave. There's different methods of cooking food and some of them work better than others. And I like that analogy just because it's concrete and because people can relate to not being able to cook something well in the oven that needs to be sauteed on the stove. And it's the same way with our state of mind. Sometimes one thing works better than something else. Sometimes it can give us a subpar result. And if we want to go further with something else, we can. It's not that something is invalid. It's not that a stovetop is dumb or that induction is ridiculous. 
it's a different method for a different reason, for a different person, for a different purpose. So have some fun and explore these different